Prior to this season, outside of his rookie year, Clay Thompson started in every single game he has played in. But it looks like things are finally starting to change. It's no secret, only a few players in NBA history shape up with Clay Thompson in terms of three-point shooting ability, and when Clay gets hot, no one can stop him. That being said, this 2023-24 season, almost 13 years after he entered the league, has seen his most significant decline in output, and he seems far from the two-way juggernaut from a few years back. Interestingly enough, this decline has coincided with the rise of a rookie guard, who goes by Brandon Podzemski, forcing Steve Kerr to make a change in the Warriors starting lineup, inserting pods, while moving probably the best catch and shoot player in NBA history to the bench. But how did this happen? What led to the Warriors moving one of their most valuable players ever to the bench, only to replace him with a rookie who was barely 21 years old? These are just some of the questions we'll be answering, and more, as we look back at the rise and fall of Klay Thompson, also conflicting with the rise of a special young rookie. Welcome to Sportsphere. Let's get into it. Klay Thompson, born in Los Angeles to Michael and Julie Thompson, with his dad Michael being the first overall pick of the 1978 NBA draft, and his mother Julie being an ex-D1 volleyball player for the University of Portland. Clay had a successful early career as a young hooper, following in the footsteps of his ex-NBA father, with Clay showcasing his elite shooting before he was even a teenager. He set multiple three-point records in his junior and high school career before eventually being seen as a top recruit in his draft class. Coming out of Washington State University, Clay wasn't initially excited about joining the Golden State Warriors, as he was a Lakers fan growing up from watching his father in purple and gold, and with the Warriors also making just one playoff appearance in the previous 18 seasons. Anyways, after being selected 11th overall by Golden State, once the season began, Thompson quickly earned the trust of coach Mark Jackson with his exceptional shooting and perimeter defense, alongside teammate Steph Curry, who was drafted two years prior. Interestingly, Clay and Curry apparently didn't even say a word to each other in Clay's rookie year. We didn't really speak to each other that much. Like, I was so quiet. Our relationship really didn't build till our third year when we played at Team USA and we finally hung out off the court. And despite his reserved demeanor, Thompson's performance on the court spoke volumes. In his rookie year, he showcased his scoring ability, averaging 12.5 points per game while shooting an impressive 41% from beyond the arc, earning him a spot on the NBA All-Rookie First Team. As Thompson's career progressed, his reputation as one of the league's premier shooters solidified. He consistently displayed remarkable accuracy from three-point range, achieving the milestone of making over 200 threes in a season with over 40% accuracy multiple times, done by a select few throughout history. And it wouldn't be long until he would have an instrumental contribution to one of the greatest dynasties ever. And alongside Steph Curry, Thompson formed one of the most formidable backcourts in NBA history. Their lethal shooting and chemistry on the court led Coach Jackson to proclaim them as the greatest shooting backcourt the game has ever seen. And it wouldn't take long until this label stuck on the light-skinned duo. In their first NBA playoffs, the Splash Brothers led the Warriors past the Nuggets, with Clay's shooting efficiency improving even further. In Game 2 of the second round against the Spurs, Clay scored a career-high 34 points, hitting 8 of 9 from deep proving his three-point proficiency could also be present when it mattered most, in the playoffs. However, the Spurs, led by Kawhi and Tim Duncan, sent the Warriors home, before ultimately winning the title that year. In 2014, Thompson continued to improve, and so did the Warriors. Clay averaged 18 points per game and much improved perimeter defense. However, the playoffs would see a disappointing first-round loss to the Lob City Clippers. But still, this playoff exit proved to be a blessing in disguise, as it led to the hiring of one of the most successful ex-NBA players ever, Steve Kerr, as head coach for the 2015 season, a decision that led to success completely unfathomable at the time. Kerr quickly proved to be the perfect fit for Golden State, as he recognized the outstanding shooting abilities of his backcourt and had a brilliant plan to amplify their impact. But who knew Steve Kerr's coaching ability would not only change how Golden State played basketball, but also change how the entire NBA played basketball as a whole. Regardless, under the leadership of Kerr, the Warriors adopted a fast-paced, three-point-heavy style of play, focusing on moving the ball quickly. 
and finding space for the open shooter, complemented by Kerr's emphasis on screening and cutting. To add to the backcourt duo of Steph and Clay, the recent addition to the starting lineup, Draymond Green, became the perfect glue piece for the Warriors to become even more versatile. And in the first year under Kerr's coaching, the Warriors achieved a franchise record 67 wins, becoming the league's top defense and second best offense, with Clay also playing an integral perimeter defense role, often guarding the opposition's best player. And the 2015 season saw Thompson have a breakout season, averaging over 20 points per game and making his first all-star appearance. But it was during the season, on January 23, 2015, Thompson reached an unimaginable height in a regular season game, scoring a career-high 52 points. But more significantly, achieving an NBA record of 37 points in a single quarter, still unmatched by any other player ever. His nine three-pointers in the quarter also set a league record, showcasing an otherworldly display of shooting prowess likened to NBA 2K more than reality. In the same 2014-15 season, Clay and Steph set a new record for combined threes in a season, with 525. But doubts persist about their championship prospects due to their perimeter-heavy style, as it was never really seen done successfully in NBA history. However, they defied expectations, dominating the Western Conference playoffs and securing a finals victory over LeBron's Cavaliers, ending the franchise's 40-year drought. Clay played a pivotal role despite a subpar finals performance. And in the 2015 to 2016 season, Clay's game continued to evolve, showcasing improved scoring, efficiency, and versatility. He made another all-star appearance and won the three-point shooting contest. The Warriors, who seemed unstoppable, shattered their regular season wins record, however, fell short in the finals after throwing a 3-1 lead to the Cavaliers. Although they lost, their failure to win led to the acquisition of one of the best offensive players ever, and the perfect player to fill the missing piece on a near-perfect Warriors team. After Kevin Durant's arrival, although the Warriors became hated, this led to probably the best team in NBA history which immediately led to multiple championships for the Warriors. In the 2016-17 regular season, Clay would soon again have another one of his memorable games that only Clay Thompson could pull off. There was one game in December 2016 where he overslept, but still scored 60 points and dribbled the ball only 11 times. Absolutely ridiculous. The 2017 Warriors team won 67 games with a historic offensive rating and stellar defense led by Draymond and Clay. And in the first season of KD on the team, although expectations were that Clay would take a backseat to KD, Clay ended up having the best scoring average of his career of 22.3 points per game. His playoff shooting struggled, but his impeccable defense against top guards propelled the Warriors to a dominant 16 and 1 playoff record, the best in NBA history. In 2018, Thompson and the Warriors continued their record-breaking rampage, overcoming challenges from the Harden-led Rockets and sweeping LeBron's Cavaliers in the finals for their third title in four years. Despite a slow start in the 2019 season, Thompson set records with explosive performances, breaking the three-pointers in a game record with 14 in three quarters against the Bulls, also showcasing his defense and conditioning, earning him a spot on the all-defensive second team. Thompson's ability to guard the toughest opponents and his endurance make him an unstoppable yet underrated force on both ends of the ball. In his first eight NBA seasons, Klay Thompson was seen as a durable player, barely missing games, sitting out in just 25 games altogether. However, after the Warriors' 2019 Finals appearance, he suffered a devastating torn ACL in Game 6 against the Kawhi-led Raptors, only to suffer another significant injury a torn Achilles 16 months later, forcing him to miss two full seasons, having two of the most serious injuries an athlete can have, while the Warriors missed out on another potential championship, with KD also going down in the final series against Toronto. This broke Klay Thompson, and although it was unlikely he would return as the same electrifying player, it wouldn't be long until he shocked the NBA world. On January 8, 2022, Clay returned to the NBA floor, scoring 17 points against the Cavs. And despite reduced mobility and defensive output, he remained a lethal shooter, averaging 20 points per game in the regular season and 19 in the playoffs, helping the Warriors secure another NBA title in the 2022 playoffs. 
In the following season, Clay proved that he didn't lose his shooting touch by dropping a ridiculous 12 threes against the OKC Thunder, followed by another 12 three-pointer showcase against the Rockets just over two weeks later. Clay was back in the eyes of many fans. However, this was short-lived. As after a disappointing playoff exit to the Lakers in the 2023 playoffs, in this 2023-24 season so far, Clay would have one of his worst seasons of his career. Although Clay previously had off nights every now and again, off nights this season became a regular occurrence. In just over 50 games so far, Clay has had his least efficient season, both from the field and from three, averaging under 42% from the field and just over 37% from deep. Although not terrible, there is no doubt he's been unlike his lethal self. And after consistent single point games, after another disappointing game against the Clippers, where Clay went one of nine from deep before making a crucial error in the final stages, leading to the Warriors' loss. There's one. And they get a foul, Westbrook. And Clay. That was not what you wanted. Almost 50 games into the season, Steve Kerr made a decision, going against the wishes of his star guard but it seemed like a decision that was for the best because there was a rookie that was making his impact felt which could no longer be ignored. Brandon Podjemski, of Polish descent coming out of Greenfield, Wisconsin, attended St. John's Northwestern Military Academy and found an affinity to basketball at a young age. Despite not playing varsity as a freshman at high school, attending Muskego High School, he earned first team all state honors as a sophomore averaging 22.5 points and 9.3 rebounds per game. His junior season saw him repeat as a first-team All-State selection, posting nearly 28 points and over 9 rebounds per game. However, as a senior, he would truly make a name for himself, before being named Wisconsin Mr. Basketball after averaging a ridiculous 35.1 points, 10 rebounds, 5.6 assists, and 4 steals per game, also earning the boys Basketball Gatorade Player of the Year for Wisconsin in 2021. After his senior campaign, he was rated a four-star recruit before he committed to play college basketball at Illinois over offers from Kentucky, Miami, Vanderbilt, and Wake Forest due to the potential for more minutes on court. That being said, at Illinois for Pods' freshman year, he would feature in just 16 games with very limited bench minutes, seeing him average just over one point per game. And in search for more opportunity, Brandon would transfer to the Santa Clara Broncos for his sophomore season, and this proved to be one of the best decisions he ever made. His campaign with the Broncos began with a bang, where after being assigned the team's starting shooting guard role, Pods dropped 30 points, 9 rebounds, and 5 steals in his debut, and followed it up with a 34-point performance against Georgia Southern in the following game. Pods continued to impress throughout the season, before scoring the fourth most points for the season in Santa Clara history, winning multiple awards, and ending the season averaging 19 points, 8 rebounds, and 3 assists, becoming one of only three players to do so in NCAA Division I basketball, also finishing fifth in the entire NCAA in three-point percentage of nearly 44%. This saw Pods confidently declare for the 2023 NBA Draft, which was a stacked class, seeing him picked up 19th overall by probably the best organization he could have hoped for. And under the development of Golden State, Pods quickly proved his smooth all-round game and maturity beyond his years, fitting into the Golden State Warriors roster seamlessly. Despite having a more minor role early, in around mid-December, the 20-year-old rookie Brandon Podziemski started making some serious noise, setting multiple milestones, seeing him become a hot topic among Warriors among other NBA fans. Most notably, on December 12, 2023, against the Phoenix Suns, Podziemski achieved a remarkable feat, becoming the first Golden State Warriors rookie since Steph Curry in the 2009-10 season to record 20-plus points, 10-plus rebounds, and 5 or more assists in a single game, scoring 20 points, grabbing 11 boards, and dishing out 5 assists. Then, on December 25, 2023, facing the Denver Nuggets, Podziemski made history again, becoming the first rookie in NBA history to tally 9-plus rebounds, 6-plus assists, 5-plus steals, and 3-plus three three-pointers in a single game. That night, he contributed 13 points, 9 rebounds, 6 assists, and 5 steals on impressive shooting splits of 57, 75, and 100. 
now just over two thirds of the way into the season. In the 50 games Pods has played, he's averaged 10 points, six rebounds, four assists, and almost one steal per game, shooting nearly 46% from the field and 37.3% from three. And during an outing in mid-February against the Clippers, with Clay having another off night, becoming a more regular occurrence, Pod stepped up, making up for Clay's shortcomings, dropping 25 points, seven rebounds, eight assists, and going five of five from deep. And this proved to be the straw that broke the camel's back prompting Steve Kerr to make the executive decision to start Brandon Podzimski and move Clay to the bench after the game. So far, since the switch, with Kerr adamant on keeping Clay coming off the bench, Clay has seemed to have a different motivation to prove himself once again, seeing the move being quite successful so far. You just gotta let the ego go when you think of coming off the bench and all that. I thought about Manu Ginobili, that guy has four rings and gold medal, and he came off the bench his whole career. Well, coming off the bench, gave me fresh legs, uh, that, especially off a of back-to-back, -back, that was nice. But to compare the two, there's no doubt that Pods has a more complementary style that is more team-oriented, while Clay's game is generally make or miss based on how hot he is, with Pods having significantly more rebounds and assists than Clay, while also having less turnovers, but still being more efficient offensively despite less points. And with Kaminga also becoming a force for the Warriors' front court, Pods has fit in very well into the starting lineup as the two, alongside Steph Curry. And although this swap has only had minimal impact on the minutes of the two, moving a future Hall of Famer, contributing to four championships in the past decade to the bench is no easy decision. However, it seems like one that was inevitable, especially considering the surge of a polished young rookie, still with all the potential in the world, Although this decision is not permanent, it'll be interesting to see how the rest of the season plays out, especially when playoffs time hits. Anyways, thanks for watching Sportsphere. What do you think about the decision to move Clay to the bench and inserting pods into the starting lineup? Please let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear your thoughts. See you in the next video.